All right. As usual, promotional consideration brought to you by John K, Andrew C, Lady Quick Blood 35, Moonbad, Bobus D, Craig B, Jimmy M, Drac was a James C, Macy J, Tipsy Thomas, James B, Wallach, Jason G, Michael W, Christian M, Cornite Care Bear, Orlinius Pius, Road Dog, King of Salt, Soul Blighter, Sage MC, and PP Asquali. Uh, tippers After Dark. Prince.net, CelticMiniatures.com, Randy the Axe Man. How's everybody doing today? I'll wait for a sound check from the audience while I bring up the screen. I also forgot to put in the description what else I'd be talking about today because I think anybody uh, who's playing 10th edition 40k right now, um, they, they need a kind of a buyer beware guide on where to put their dollars if they want to start an orc army. And uh, I was just um, kind of putting things in a shopping cart of that I, of recent ads that I put in the army that I have to run now and everything because you know there's a lot of things that are in the orc army huge range of miniatures and not a lot of it is good uh you know you can tell what's good if you go over to gamesworkshop.com and uh just take a look over there and it, 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 it is you go over to the very back pages and you'll see everything the things that are good are temporarily out of stock now, what I, I don't get is why can't things just be somewhat good across the board in every army? Like Marines, a lot of their stuff is just good, all right? You know, we're just going to, you know, if there's four categories of terrible, okay, good, and awesome. Let's go through that again. I better write that down right now. Okay, so there's terrible, all right? Okay, good, and awesome. Awesome is spelled wrong. All right, hold on here. Okay, awesome. You have four categories. I just don't know why they can't run that across the board for every single army. You have some broken shit. I have some broken shit. I have some mid-tier shooting, you have some mid-tier shooting, we can trade across the board, you know, I mean, I, 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 I don't understand that the design flaw, you know, so there, there is that. Um, so I, I was just going over there and I just like, I, I put together a list, hold on here, boom, boom, and uh, what isn't on the list are, uh, what isn't in the basket are two beast bosses on Squigasaur. And they're 165 points each. Those are in the sold out category. Um, that means they're awesome. And uh, when I was just shopping this morning and everything, those are in the sold out category for, for being awesome and everything. Just like um, with, with knobs, war bosses, flash gets. You can really just tell what's awesome right out the, right out the door. But if you want to start an orc army and... Uh, in Warhammer 40k today, you know, and you, you know, I, I think it's, I, I think there's something to be said for waiting and just not, never buy the start collecting box, all right, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just tell you now, Bleep Games Workshop, never ever buy the starting box, if you're getting into Warhammer 40k for the first time, and some dumbass British person named Nigel Thornberry comes across the room. Hey, I work for, for Games Workshop. I want you to start with the Orc Start Collecting Box. You can play Combat Patrol. I want you to pull out your middle finger, shove it in his dumb British face, and tell him to sit and spin. He'll be like, oh, Bo I'm in bollocks. I didn't meet my quota for selling Start Collecting Boxes. Oh, no. That, that's what you need to do. Because, again, you know, I mean, it's like... I'd like to punish Games Workshop at some point, but nobody else does, you know, with, uh, with uh, you know, a boycott or something like that. If White Trash can do it, I'm pretty sure Metropolitan uh, Gaming, uh, I, I don't know how to describe, uh, gaming guys can do, gaming bros can do it too. But, you know, I went over and I added the things to my cart and I just sort of made a list of things that are just good right now across the board and they all kind of go in the good category there's okay a few of these things are okay and then there's like terrible what what's terrible boys and trucks why are they terrible because you don't have the assault vehicle special rule which is a huge design flaw um it used to be uh 
6th edition, 7th edition, you just jump out of your trucks and mob up on everybody and that's how orcs fought. You know, and it's really not that expensive. A $961 price tag, what is that? A median earner, that's a median income earner's uh, paycheck right there. Uh, that's one paycheck that you're going to be spending on Games Workshop stuff or you'll be spreading this out over two paychecks. You know, and that's really not that bad. Um, I will say that my mortgage is less than that. All right. I will, I will say that my mortgage is less than that for the month. Um, that's really not that bad. But again, this game has never been for poor people. All right. I'm just, I'm going to go out and I'm going to level with you guys there. If you're working in a call center or you're, some kind of Canadian neat who doesn't really have a job and you're just voting Trudeau in because you want your free stuff, Warhammer isn't necessarily for you, all right? Get a job. Your, your, your hobby should be in skill accumulation, okay? And uh, the, so just with all of the research that I've done over my games, and again, all those games are over there on Rumble, and a uh, little bit of housekeeping, I accidentally uploaded a video from Patreon, so I want to apologize to the patrons uh, on Rumble, and it, it came out under the disguised name of uh, uh, episode 29, The Hangout, and so I had this battle report out there, and I'm like, uh-oh, they're not supposed to be getting that. That's supposed to come out when I when I put out the next battle report, so I hope, uh, I hope the, the 10 of you that watched it enjoyed it. Um, I, so I had to delete the video this morning because it's not quite ready to release. Usually there's a release schedule. Next fantasy game, that one goes over to Rumble from Patreon. And then um, I think most of the videos that I put up will be available. Uh, still available on Patreon, and I'm just, I don't think I'm ever going to release it, is the Battle for Marathon that me and the Ranger had. Simply because, you know, I, I don't think that there's a lot of interest. You know, I mean, just with how I got so sufficiently handled algorithmically with my last with, with the battle of marathon and everything uh yeah i just got so sufficiently handled algorithmically that it's just like what's the point youtube's going to suppress it i don't think i'm going to have some of the uh, I, I don't think anybody's going to share it you know it's uh, it's going to get what 20 likes at best you know so I, I don't know what to do with that and i gotta hold up here Come over here, put this there. That way I can watch the live chat. Hello, Weird World War, Weird World War II, Command Bunker, Rodney Hampton, the Starvarian, and what's up, Shadow? You were the first one here. Hello, Leon T. How are you doing? And so, um, you know, just with that, that's I think that's going to just remain a Patreon exclusive. If you want to watch the battle of, uh, what do you call it, um, of, of uh, Thermopylae, it's just going to stay there for a little while longer because I, I really don't think I'm going to, I'm going to gain any traction if I release the video. I'm just going to be dumped on by the algorithm as usual. Uh, I might I might throw it over on Rumble, and uh, that that might actually help me there because I've just got to 40 uh, followers on Rumble. Uh, the only problem is people aren't leaving the likes. Ah, please leave your likes on Rumble. That uh, really helps out the channel. But at least I'm growing over there. I went from zero to 40. Now I granted granted I can count half of the half, more than half of that 40 some of my diehards but I, I went from 0 to 40. I went viral again on uh, Instagram with a little uh, I'm work uh, with the little announcement last weekend that I was working. Uh, you know, so that aside, you know, I was just kind of looking it out, you know, and I put this list together um and uh, so I started with four boxes of Squig Hog Boys. Why did I start with four boxes of Squig Hog Boys? Squig Hog Boys are just king. Uh, they made these guys really good. They, they go in the awesome category. Uh, all the things that they can do, the anti-vehicle, anti-monster keywords that they get. They were really good in the last edition, but of course they're new models. And this is one of the problems that I have with uh, GW and, and stuff like that is... Um, you know, they, what, what do you call it? They just, they, they can't make things slightly good. You know, nothing is slightly good. It either has to be awesome or terrible. And if you're lucky enough to have a couple of things that are good, you got a good army. But nothing, you know, it either falls, you know, so this is just one of those things that falls into awesome. You want to run, um, according to my list here, I'm bringing two units of six of these guys with two bomb squigs. And, uh, you know, you might want to rapid ingress one of these on the table or something like that. But they're just, 
They're, they're just the deal breakers right now because the Mega Knobs, they aren't that good. And Mega Knobs historically have been, always been good. And so I'm kind of shocked this edition to see Mega Knobs kind of in, in, in the B and B and C tier because they're just, they don't have the damage output that they need to be successful. I think the Mega Knobs need a, need a, they did get a points drop. I'll take three of them for 90 points, but you know, I mean, the Squigog boys, they're just solid. Uh, either three units of uh, three or two units of six. That's only going to run you 220 points. You know, and when you have something that's good, you repeat the you repeat the formula. Next up, um, I'm running two units of commandos. The commandos are coming back into my list in the camp in the next campaign game because I you need that midfield pressure. You need to just sort of start out on objectives in the middle or pressuring some other area of the field, not where you're deployed. You know, that'll take the pressure off of some of your other soldiers. When, so they're not getting Oath of Momented. You know, let the commandos soak up the Oath of Moment target. And if they die, nothing of value was really lost. And a lot of times they, they're pretty they're pretty hardy. You know, they've got a 4 plus save and cover. They can uh, use a Distraction Grot to give them a 5 plus and Vulnerable. And uh, they, they can just, they can, they can get that objective for you. You know, so they're just... They're just solid, more solid than a than a unit of boy. For if you pay ten more points, you have a unit of boys and trucks. You know, so I, I you know, th these two at the top. Uh, there's a reason they're at the top of the basket is because they're the capital demands. They're they're literally the capital demands, and uh, commandos are just awesome models. Let's just uh, go with that. Now, what falls into the good category? I added one rucka truck squig buggy. Um, they're not bad, uh, you know, they, they're, they're one of the few things that'll hit on fours, you know, let's just, yay there, you know, it's just another target, but, uh, you know, that, that, that really does go into the good category, all right, now, what goes into the okay category, hunter rigs, for 160 points, if one of them dies, it's not really that terrible, um, they can fight, they can hurt things in close combat, um, yeah, I put them in the okay category. Uh, you could you could go over here when you you could buy these instead. I bought two of these Nazilla models. Save myself. What what are they a piece here? Um, ooh God! Oh, wow. Yeah, save save yourself some money. You can go two hundred instead of a uh, hundred and forty bucks a pop. There, you know. I mean, you can. I mean, there's one for a hundred and six. But uh, here here's one right here. Hundred hundred four with free shipping. I think this is. But I bought two of these, and assembly isn't really that bad. Uh, you know, just, uh, you might want to pin the head on. That's something I didn't do to the first one that got built and painted. Uh, but this is a good alternative model. And unlike the Forge World one, you know, here's what's stupid about the Forge World uh, Squig Off. It's $155, and they don't make the cannon for it anymore. What the hell, GW? You, you discontinued the cannon that it's supposed to come with and could come with. You know, I mean, I, I don't know what, they, what they're thinking over there, but, you know, they give you this thing. They can't even buy the gun for it anymore, you know, which was a separate purchase. But, you, you know, th these uh, at 150 points, if you just run them as the Squigoths, not the Gargantuan, but the Squigoths, if you just run them as the Squigoths, I'm going to say they're, um, they're decent. At 150 points, they're, they're just okay. And again, if they die, nothing of value was lost, you know, but they have 18 wounds. That's something you got to watch out for. 18 wounds at toughness 10, you know, just, uh, and I, I would place them neck and neck with the Hunter Rig, maybe just slightly better, even though they don't have the guns that the Hunter Rig has. The gun, I mean, face it, orc shooting is so weak, you're basically in the cuck shed for one, for one whole phase of your turn. Yeah, I mean, orc, or, orc shooting is just basically your job is to receive, all right, so let's let's just catch up with chat here for a second. Sounds good. All right, everyone's just sort of listening to me. What's up? Hey, Caleb Nix, haven't seen you here for a while. We got Leon T watching. All right, so I'm just I'm gonna go back to what I was doing here. Boom. So uh, yeah, these these just fall in the okay category right here. These two. Uh, Gretchen go into the good category. You know, for twenty five bucks, you got something to sit on your home field objective. You know, that's very, for 40 points, uh, you know, that's that's a small price to pay. Um, these guys, uh, the Storm Boys, uh, they have the deep strike capability. And, uh, you know, having 
four deep strike units show up turn two because all of this is pretty easy to hide turn one, everything in your army, except for the hunter rigs. Maybe you just throw everything down. They can't stop it. You put these guys in cover, you know, or behind a building somewhere, you know, you do your best to hide these. You know, you always, you never know when you're going to get turn one, but uh, these guys, they just come out of deep strike. You know, you, you they have a very small footprint. You can put them somewhere to grab a far off objective. But uh, what I do like are the death copters. The death copters, I have 12 of these from my last, from, from the last edition. And, uh, you know, now they've dropped down to 100 points. Now these guys can put out a lot of anti-infantry fire. Again, it's only AP2, but it is damage three. And you get to reroll to wound, which does come in handy. Uh, and uh, again, you know, you can establish two firing lanes. You can have these come up midfield and now they have to kind of choose and maybe one of them can be on an objective. But for appearing on objectives, these are actually pretty decent purchases. And so the list I put together, uh, again, uh, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll go and we'll show you what was awesome for orcs was uh, two units of commandos, two hunter rigs, uh, 40 Gretchen, uh, two units of death copters, three apiece. I mean... Just 10 Gretchen, sorry. And then uh, six Squig Hog Boys, six Squig Hog Boys, five Storm Boys, knob with Power Claw, five Storm Boys, knob with Power Claw. Oh, and I forgot to add one thing. So we will have to go back to Xenos. Uh, so that, yes, it did, this did just get a little more expensive. Hold on. I forgot to add one more thing. Orcs, please. Where are they? Oh, add. And add. Oh, well, I left the cart, and so it uh, backed me out. So that would be a, another 110. And there was two units of war bikers. The war bikers, uh, I like them now. I really like them now. It sucks that you can't have a unit of 15 of them, and it really sucks that they're not battle line. But for 70 points a pop, these guys can zip around onto objectives, get to a place where they can actually support your commandos or something. They can get into the middle of the field and uh, they, can, they can threaten the objectives. Also, they're not bad at repulsing uh, Marines either. Like the Marine snipers are no match for them when you show up on the objective, because usually they send those out to get objectives. They're, they're not bad at killing those guys. And uh, I had a unit of those guys hold up for like two turns in a battle report against intercessors which have become the bane of my existence lately um with their le with the character that gives them lethal hits so i've got bolters taking out my death dreads and this is just one and the reason why i made this is just one of those videos about how you have to change your lists during the run of these campaigns is because then they discover something else that works and yeah i've had both of my just the, both of my death dreads just in one game killed the bolter fire or laser cannoned off the table, you know, or, um, you know, and again, Marine shooting is, just, in my opinion, some of the, you know, I, I, I want to play my friend who has an Eldar army, but, you know, some of the um, shooting that comes out of the Marines is just no friggin' joke with that oath of moment. Oh, look, I have a tech priest. This, this tank of mine for 230 points hits on twos and it will stick damage to you like a fly to shit. Now, it, what's cute is I'm going to shoot you back with everything in my army, and I kill two and a half Marines. Yay! Or I kill an Intercessor. Yay! I have no shooting. And um, th that really freaking sucks. I'm not going to lie there. You know, so, uh, yeah, just Intercessors have become the, the bane of my existence. Not to mention they pit, you know, their toughness six, three wounds apiece. You know, maybe two wounds, not three, but, you know, the T6... Uh, T6 models and everything, how they've been more liberal with some of the toughness values on some of these guys really hurts the orcs right now. Um, some of the stuff that falls into the good category, you know, uh, just going... Uh, well, let's let, let's just show you what's sold out. All right. Don't know why the stomp is sold out, but I guess people are going to start using it again. But you go over here. Sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Uh, yeah, the beast bosses on Squigasaurs are just king. 
Um, I never thought I'd see the day where, uh, where uh, what do you call it, gas cool and mega knobs are just put on the back burner for, I mean, this is literally like, this, this should tell you everything that's like good in orcs right now. You know, knobs are really good. Okay, they've been, they've been shelved for like two editions anyway. You know, I, I, I rarely, you would rarely see them, you know. I mean, I, I actually arrived to the point that Mega Knobs are just way better for the points cost. Like, I haven't used Knobs since 8th edition when I had an all Knobs list. So there was that, you know. My all Knobs list had 10 of these guys running around. Um, this guy's not bad, but, you know, I mean, just, you know, but the fact that this the, this kit is completely sold out. They made these guys better than Gazcool, you know, I mean... Now, I can see this guy running neck and neck with Gazgool, but, like, making these guys better than Gazgool, it's like, why, why do you want us to buy a single model? Can't you just kind of up up the uh, statistics on some of these models across the range? And you got five pages of crap you can buy up here. You know, some of the planes are okay. Like, this one's okay still. I just, I don't, I just don't find a find time to run it. This is, the Battle Wagon's way too expensive. You know, and, um, oh, they made these guys $70 now. Uh-oh, prices are creeping up. Uh-oh, the poor people are going to complain. <laughs> but these guys, you know, they again, they kind of, uh, Gazgool and the Mega Knobs became kind of became the biggest losers. Now, I know everything's situational, but, like, I, w what I re really think is uh, what would fix the Mega Knobs is just give them a 5-plus feel no pain or make, make them hit harder in close combat and you're talking a very small percentage of the army if these guys hit harder in close combat you know so enough of that you know just um just digressing at this point but you know what one, one full median income earners paycheck I, I think it's a small price to pay to get into the game but you know i mean you should uh you should always look for buyers guides and I'm gonna try to put those out you know but you let's just let me backsplash this against someone here I wonder what's sold out in Eldar I just I wanna I wanna go down this tangent right now or Gadar as I like to call them what is out of stock what is out of stock it's gonna be towards the Gonna be towards the, okay. So okay, there we go. I've heard about those being good. Let's keep going. Okay, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Got a lot of options. A lot of good stuff there. Falcons. The oh yeah, the fire prisons. They've always been kind of good though. Mm. <laughs> That's th this is this is a freaking crime right here. Um, even back in 7th edition, you know, when people would run three or four of these in their lists because they were only 275 points, you'd hear some Gator player, oh, that's not broken. That's not broken at all that I could have four of these in a list. Dur, dur. You know, like, you Games Workshop, write a better fucking game. <laughs> at least they upped the points cost on these two. I, I think it's 495. It should be 600. You know, just blot it out for good. You know, but again, this is an army that, you know, can actually participate in the shooting phase and trade, you know, so there's that. Anyway, screw all that horse rubbish here. Let's uh, go over to this stream here. Catch up with chat. Boom. Let's put Aka up on the window seal for a minute. Bam. All right. Now we got something to look at. I'm not having the best hair day today. Um, what, what do we got here? Uh, okay, so no, they capped out the orc units at uh, 20. You can't run a mob of 30. Uh, I I don't think you've been able to run a mob... I, I don't think you've ever been able to run a mob of 40, except for when they had that formation, which would allow you to put 10 units of orcs together into a giant super unit. And that was that was uh, back in 7th edition. Um, again, like, okay, the orc boys themselves, Caleb, they got no freaking love whatsoever. Uh, I, I could see boys if they brought back the four plus save because he's wearing art armor and, uh, I, I wish they'd bring that feature back so that, you know, it's like, okay, I don't mind paying 85 points per, for, for 10 boys as long as they had a four plus save. There you go. The, the orc boy has a four plus save. That's his thing. All right. Or... If I want to trade out his 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 uh, slugger chopper, 
I can bring sh I, I can bring a shooter, and the shooter has three shots, and it's AP minus one. You got AP minus one on the shooter. That would make boys more viable, which is literally like the the core line of your army. They want you to bring beast snagger boys. Beast snagger boys are five dollars more than regular boys, and they're just better. They have a six plus feel no pain. They're strength five, and um, they just trade a lot better. All right. Hey, Tyler Norwood. Go for it painting. Hello. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for hitting the thumbs up, buddy. Thanks for that. Uh, go for it painting, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Like it when a newcomer comes in. I, I recognize icons and, uh, you know, I have a lot of regulars that watch, you know, so there's a new guy. Remember to say hi to him. GW really needs to do something about the sold out shit. It's near impossible to actually build. Yeah. Again, you know, uh, I'm sure GW is like every British company out there. They were just oh, job and knobs for lockdowns and everything. And, you know, that that's still we're still having supply shock issues that are going to have even more far reaching consequences into the next two years. You know, I mean, like the decoupling from China. Well, you know, if I if I was Xi Jinping tomorrow, you know what I would do? You know what I'd literally do to mess with the United States? I would just, I would just wouldn't send, I, I just wouldn't let any ships with the antibiotics and birth control come out of my country. You know, you got China making our antibiotics. They got them making the birth control. I, you know, a lot of the medicine that we use, over-the-counter medicine, all of that crap's made in China. All of our, you know, they could make us beg for mercy in about two weeks, especially if they cut off the titty that controls the uh, birth control and antibiotics. That would be hilarious, you know. But, uh, you know, and then uh, what you have to think about, like, the GW is a UK company. What do they do? What do they produce in the UK? They don't produce a lot. They don't have a lot of hard good exports. A again, Aston Martin, GW, what, they have like, what, 3,000 employees at best? Uh, you know, you really have to dig deep. I mean, Range Rover is one of the few companies. Well, okay, uh, one company. I am invested in a UK-based uh, company. I'm invested in Diageo, and this is not investment advice. But you have to look at the brands that Diageo owns. You know how many gamers I see with Crown Royal bags carrying their dice? That means every gamer out there drinks Crown Royal. Now, you know, there's, there's also Johnny Walker. They hold a lot of liquors, you know, and when times get tough... People are going to start hitting the bottle. That's why I have stock in liquor. And again, this is not financial advice, but yes, I do have, I do hold, you know, why I wouldn't hold a junk bond company like Games Workshop when I can hold a company that bottles liquor and sells an actual hard good that is never going away. Liquor is never going away. Cigarettes are never going away. You know, it'll be funny when like when the financial pinch really hits us here in America and in the West because of the Ukraine war and they just won't take the L and um, w w and uh, oh I'm you know I might rotate into grain because I, I, I see them actually manipulating and shorting grain to keep the price low uh, and uh, so that the stock doesn't go to the moon. I think grain shares are actually gonna uh, triconium wheat is actually gonna go from five something down to about. 498 a share. I'm I'm waiting for it to drop because I got I got screwed on natural gas last year. When natural gas started dropping, I started buying and they've kept natural gas down with bullshit propaganda and bullshit importation from uh what do you call it? Canada for about two years now. All right. Not to mention, you know, I mean, it's turned Dominion into a junk bond company. Again, this is why I'm not giving you any financial advice. Just ignore what I'm saying, but you, you see what I'm saying there, you know, we, we have, we, we're going to start, we're not even exporting any of this LNG, liquid natural, liquid uh, natural gas over to Europe yet. The LNG facility, to my knowledge, isn't exporting. We're not exporting, we're just holding it in here as much as we can because uh, we, we're going to need it to run our power plants in the winter. And what are they doing in Europe? Well, they're burning coal in Germany. They've been deindustrializing and letting Africans into their countries for Damn near 30 years now. 30 years. I, mean, I think at the end of the 80s, France started letting uh, Africans in there. And what is France gearing up to do now? They're gearing up to go to war with Niger. 
which is hilarious. So you've let all these Africans into your country. There's all these weapons on the black market, courtesy of Ukraine, and uh, you, you've let these people into your country. You basically give them carte blanche to shit in the streets and riot whenever somebody insults Islam. And you're going to go to war with an African country, France. Yeah, you, you got it's got to be the smartest MFers I've ever seen. France probably being the biggest joke of a Euro trash country that I've ever seen, you know. Uh, next to like the Norwegian countries, you know, where like the men all have their man. But I haven't seen one manly dude from Scandinavia for a long time. You know, I mean, all, all they do is produce heavy metal and autistic kids. There you go. That's about all they do. I mean... So, uh, you know, I mean, I'm waiting, and Russia said they're, they're, I, I, they need to end this war. Russia needs to end this war because they're already sending long-range missiles to Ukraine, and they're using them against targets in Odessa and uh, targets in Crimea, and, and they're hitting Moscow with drones, you know. And so they're, I think they need to drop the hammer uh, sooner rather than later. I don't know what the, you know, I mean, my, my guess is that God is some kind of tot-touching pedophile because the ground never hardened last year, and so they weren't able to end this with a winter offensive, you know. But, uh, you know, I, 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 other than surrounding Crimea and just blasting it into the Stone Age with artillery, I don't see what else to do, you know. So, you know, I, I, they shouldn't be slow walking this war at all. You know, they should bring it to an end right before the 2024 election and let that stand on Biden's record there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, whatever, like, supply shop, I mean, I, I doubt that there's never going to be a way to get plastic for GW, but shipping things, they, they make everything in-house in the United States here in Tennessee anyway, you know, so that they can omit those costs. They'll still charge you the same as if they were shipping it from the UK, you know, there's the extra little icing on the cake there, but they, uh, they, uh, what do you call it, um... Uh, as, as far as like supply shocks, diesel's already gone to five. I've already made a sale. I've made $700 selling my XLE. Uh, that's just pure profit. And I'm holding my VDE in reserve because I really think that the price is going to go to $150 a share. I sold five, you know, I bought 20 shares. I sold five of the original position when it went to 131 earlier last year. And I've been sitting on it. I've been taking the loss on energy for year and a half now. Thank you. Um, okay, that's one. Okay. Okay. Sashay, what's up, buddy? Oryx got, you know what? Uh, we, I can just go back. I've got screen cap up right here. All right. And we can go through the old Orc Codex right now. Bam. This is the 2007-2008 Codex. Open up, you piece of crap. Where did you go? Did you go behind here? Oh, it's opening up on the other screen. Let's bring it over here. Hooray. Let me double check the uh, stream here. All right, everything's good. All right, this book was really good. Really, really, really freaking good. But, uh, you know, we're going to go down to the points here. Hold on, let's uh, get to the 50s. War gear. I just want to point something out real quick. I mean, this this book is almost twenty years old. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Bop, 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 bop. Bop. One hundred twenty-five. Um. All right. We'll go down here. Where is he? Where is he? Okay, your average war boss today has gotten cheaper. I will say that. You don't pay for anything. But back then, your average war boss would run you 60 points. He could take a war bike for 40. So now he's 100. And the war, uh, and the war uh, So he's, he's more expensive. Um, what else could he take? He could take a boss pool. you got to have boss pool. you got to have heavy armor. Oh, he would have a 4 plus either way on the bike. So we'll omit the heavy armor. Where is it? Where's his power claw? 
He's going to have the power claw for 25 points. He's about 130 points, and uh, he can be a cyborg for 10. All right. So you got a guy who is uh, toughness 6, uh, strength 10 with his attacks. He's got four attacks, five during the wad. He's got Fury, Furious Charge being the uh, thing that they get when they, when they attack and everything. And, uh, you know, he's not bad for 140 points. He trades really well. This is a land raider. This guy can kill a land raider, all right? He's got a good chance to kill a land raider. All I have to do is hit you. He's BS2, all right, at 140 points. And then we can go down here and we can go to elites. Because I took a war boss, I get to use one unit of knobs as a troop choice. And I think that that's one thing that could come back to help to help orcs right there. But look at look at all the choices you had for uh, making a list back in the day. All right. Now now let now let's make a unit that's literally 600 points of win. You know, and this knob bikers need to come back. So I'm going to pay 20 points for a knob. All right. Here we go. What do we got? We're going to put 25 points onto making them uh, knobs on bikes. He's got a four plus save now. If he's on a bike, and uh, he's got a cover save now. All right. We're going to give these guys power claws. Plus 25 for a power claw. Okay, we got a knob that's 70 points here. All right. Now, we've upgraded one of these. Oh, we're going to take boss pool. Plus 5. All right. For boss pool. And uh, let's see here. Oh, we are going to take the wall banner. One of these guys is taking the wall banner. So this guy's... 90 points. All right. Uh, actually, we'll subtract five. I think you can only take per, per model. Okay, so this one guy is 90 points because he's carrying the wall banner. All right. So uh, 20 plus 25 plus 25 again. 70 points. All right. Let's take right. Let's take three of those. Times that by four. All right. 145 plus 90, all right? So that's 235 points. We've got the extra one that is a pain boy. Does it... One of the knobs may be a pain boy for 30 points. Okay, so we got... So we've got four, five, six guys for 335 points. And then uh, everyone can be a cyborg body here, so we'll go thirty for these guys. They all have a so they all have a five plus feel no pain. All right, that's awesome. They've got a five plus ward. Oh, they have a five plus ward save and a five plus feel no pain because the uh, the pain boss is in there. And then uh, let's see here, how much is it for a big chop? A big chop is are five points. All right, so we got three sixty five. Let's just end this with uh, three of these guys who have big choppas. We added four of them. So there's uh yeah, that's a that's a unit of ten. You can go up to ten knob bikers for five hundred and eighty-five points. I can have two of these units, and they've got all three of the saves. That that that's 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 a thousand what is this? We'll just times that by two. That's one thousand one hundred and seventy points of win right there, if you ask me. Try and stop them. You know, I'd like to see a unit with this kind of uh, output get oath of momented. You know, I mean, the cucking of the war bikes is something that I still haven't forgiven them for. <laughs> there you go. But down here, we'll just go to boys. Where are the boys at? I think you have to go to troops. I think we skipped over troops. Oh, troops. Your average boy has always been six points a model. I yeah, And that's, that's, that's 60 points, and then one of them gets to... I think one of them gets to be a knob for free. No, you have to upgrade them. So that's 70 points. And then you add, uh, let's see here. A big chopper. Well, he's got to have a claw. So, that, you know, I mean, it's it, it's always been around 85 points. And just a unit with a 10-man unit with a knob with power claw. That's uh, plus 35 for the truck. I mean, things haven't changed. Let's see what. Yep, the the truck is actually uh, 
You can still do the red paint job? Wow, look at all the awesome choices I have. Um, let's see here, a uh, boarding plank here. Uh, the boarding plank I could get out in this edition and assault you for, like God intended. Um, the front and side armor is 10. I think that should have been turned up to 11, but it was 35 points for the truck. So we'll just add 40. So it was 130. So it's the same amount as the unit of commandos. Now it's gone up 10 points in, to, in the current edition. Everything that I just got will cost you 10 additional points. You know, so things haven't really changed. They've just gotten more expensive. I mean, boys have never been cheap. You're either going to make them a cheap horde army where we attrition you out or you're not going to do it. They've never, they've never ever fully committed in 20 years to like what orcs are actually supposed to do. You know, I, I say bring back the knob bikers. We could write all wrongs. Just like, oh, orcs are winning every single tournament again. Yes, go fuck yourselves, you you faggot ass Eldar players, marine queers, marine dicks. All right. <laughs> yeah, things haven't really changed. They, you know, I mean, it's 135 points if you got a big shoot on your uh, truck. The truck doesn't even come with any upgrades. You know, I mean, like, what the hell were they thinking? You know, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. They may be out of stock. Okay. So, yeah, the, that book, really good. They haven't had any love, real love since that book, in my opinion. Whoever wrote that, I, I should look up. I, let, me, let, let me look and see who wrote this. Because they probably don't even work at Games Workshop anymore. Oh, this book was way too good. Mm, don't have it. I don't think I have the author on this. And nobody wrote a foreword. Somebody knows the uh, if somebody knows the author to this book, you know, I'd pin a medal on them because this really nailed what the orcs are supposed to be. Whereas they haven't been able to recreate this for a very long time. I mean. You know, I mean, if I was running things, every army would just be broken. You'd be like, everybody would have awesome and good. They wouldn't be tr they wouldn't be worrying about terrible and okay. And then, and then in six months, everybody's getting more awesome and good shit. You have broken shit. I have broken shit. The game works. It trades. No, don't have an author. Let me go down to the bottom. Nope, it just ends right there. Wish I had an author. Oh well. Say la vie there. What's up, Justin? How you doing? Now, funny you uh, mentioned that Vikings would turn their boats into graves. That's exactly how uh, Beowulf begins. Uh, they talk about, uh, what's his name? Shilv Shedding. And uh, he was a magic boy who appeared on the coast of uh, of. Uh, Daneland, which is where Beowulf sailed to battle Grendel and Shield Shevin, um, he, he he raised Hrothgar, son of Helfdener, and uh, he was the last of this uh, line. And uh, when the let, let's see, um, how, how did that go? Shield, they they laid in the mast, uh, untold riches. I, I don't remember the let's see here. How does that work? The funeral. Oh God. I don't have the book down here. Let me get that book. I I, I, I got a... There's a real good description for it. As you can see, I read this book. As you can see, I read this book a lot. And this is the Penguin edition. Still in the introduction. So it was Hethril. And then you, oh, Shield Sheffing. And that's 
sheafing, shield sheafing. All right, and he he washed the sword. He was a, and then there was a Beowulf the Dane, Health Den. Then there was Hrothgar, and the Hrothgar had a few sons. One of the things I like this is uh, we have heard of the thriving of the throne of Denmark and how the folk kings flourished in former days. How those royal eighthlings earned that glory. Was it not shields sheffing that shook the halls, took mead benches, taught encroaching foes to fear him, who found in childhood lacked clothing, yet he lived and prospered, grew in strength and st stature under the heavens. That was good Cunin. He was a good king. A boy child afterwards... Born to Schilt, a young child in Halyard, a hope for his people, sent them by God. Um, the great, uh, the great life bestowing wielder of glory, granted them this blessing, and through the northern lands, the son of Schilt uh, Sangling sprang widely, for an eighthling should so use his virtue in, in youth, that when uh, that when an old age and enemies gather. Establish friends to stand by him, serve him gladly in glorious action. That man comes by honor in any people. At the hour, sh oh, here it is. Here's his funeral. At the hour shaped for him, Shilp departed. The hero crossed into the keeping of his lord. They carried him out to the edge of the sea. His, his, his sworn arms fellows and desired them while they were, wait a minute. Okay. While he wielded his words, warden of the shieldlings, and that's uh, that's how that's the name of the people is shieldlings, beloved folk founder. Long had he ruled a boat with a ring neck. There, here it is. This is the description of the funeral um, of the Viking funeral at the beginning of Beowulf. It's only in verse thirty. A boat with a ring neck rode in the havens, icy out, eager. The eighthlings vessel, um, and there they laid out their lord and master, dealer of wound gold. In the waist of the ship, in majesty by the mast, a mound of treasures from far countries was fetched aboard her. And it is said that no boat was ever more bravely fitted out with the weapons of a warrior, accoutrement, swords, and body armor. And uh, so they, they bring all this treasure into the boat, and they, they deck it out with treasure. And then this is, this is my favorite part. High overhead, they hoisted and fixed a signum. Gave him to the flood, let the seas take him, with sour hearts in the morning mood. It is said that uh, those of uh, uh, skilled counsel cannot say surely whose ship, uh, who's, who unshipped that cargo. So they basically deck out this boat, and uh, they, uh, what do you call it? Um, they just give it to the flood and let the seas take him. And then it gets to Rothgar. The whole thing is a, the the whole first uh, fifty lines of the play are a prelude just to get to Rothgar. Very interesting stuff there. Okay, that's enough Viking thing. I think I ought to go to work on some of these miniatures at some point. All right, all right. So there, yeah. I shouldn't have gone up there to get that book, but who cares? All right. So let's see here. We'll turn this on. I'm done complaining. Done complaining about orcs. Oh, need that. I need to be there. <laughs> there she goes. And then uh, we turn display capture on. We're there. And then we, I think we're good. Yep, okay. Everything is as it's supposed to be. Display capture's off. We're there. Yep, there it is. Okay. Um, it, it's it, it's really hard when you don't read it for a minute because then the, the language can really trip you up. When uh, let's see, his hoard was not less than his hoard, less great than the gifts he had from those who had, who at the outset had adventured him overseas alone as a small child it, it, even i still get tripped up to the language by the language because it, they don't talk they don't talk like this but you can cut this story down then rothgard was granted glory in battle mastery of the field and his friends and kinsmen gladly obeyed him and his war band increased to a great company 
And it gets to part to, to the part about where he I mean just just at line seventy, they're already And as men reckon the day of readiness dawned very soon for this greatest of houses, Herot he named it, whose wor, whose uh, word ruled the wide empire. He made good his boast, gave out rings and armbands at the banquet. Boldly the hall reared its arched gables. The time was not yet when the blood feud should bring out again sworn hatred and sworn kindred. It was with pain that a powerful spirit dwelling in darkness endured that time. Hearing loudly the hall filled with loud amusement, there was music of the harp. Um, the clear song of the poet perfecting his telling of the remote first making of the race of man. He told long ago how the Lord formed earth, a bright plain to look upon, locked in ocean, exalting. The Lord established the sun and moon as lights to illumine the land dwellers and furnished forth the face of the earth and filled the acreage of the world with the branch leaf with the branch with the jewel work of branch and leaf yeah I still get tripped up on some of this language today I, I should add a few more notes on how to get through this so this uh ban and uh the life he granted to each kind creature that creeps and moves so the company of men led a careless life as well with them until one began to encompass evil, an enemy from hell, Grendel, they called this cruel spirit, master of the Fen Fortress. This unhappy being, has, since the creator cast them out as kindred of Cain. I love the biblical references in this story too. Um, for killing, for the killing of Abel, they they really uh, there's this mixture of pagan mythology, early Christian mythology. This is literally the greatest story ever told. Literally the greatest story ever told, right here, Beowulf. Um, you, if you have a if you have a good copy of Beowulf, you don't need to watch streaming services. This literally was your entertainment. Let's hear the story of Beowulf again. Fuck it. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I do. I own that. Uh, the Vi the old film of Vikings with Kurt Douglas. Why can't Vikings be happy? Did anyone ever watch Vikings? On History Channel, none of that. Sh nobody was ever happy once, and I hate Lagatha the slut. There, I said it. She goes out and bangs all these other dudes. You know, I mean, uh, you, you know, what's his name wanted to take more than one wife? What business it of is hers? Women didn't have rights back then. You know, and look at how good everything turned out. You got raided by your neighbors, and if you were a woman and you were somewhat attractive, you got taken as a war bride and rape slave. Look at Boko Haram. Look it up. Read about it. There you go. All right. We'll put this guy back here. Don't think we're uh, going to get to everything that I stated today. We're already almost an hour in, and I haven't even wet wetted my brush yet with anything. So let's hurry up and use the brown here to... Uh... I've already teched for this. Ernest Borgnine, voice of a uh, mermaid man. Yes, that's how kids would know him today. Of course, Ernest Borgnine was one hell of an actor. One hell of an actor. You ever see him in Marty or uh, Escape from New York? He was just a, he was just a one hell of an actor. I can't see. I'm getting so old and ugly. These guys are almost impossible to paint up on stream here. And again, I'm not worried about like hooves and everything. I am just going to, like all of my horses are going to be brown. Like they're just going to be brown. And again, a little bit of what black, uh, a little bit of wet Paint is all you need to adhere to the ink that I put laid down. And it, this is just battlefield brown with a little bit at with a little bit of water from the paint pot. It goes a little bit goes a long way. We're even going to do the uh, we're going to do the lances in a different color. Give me one second. I'm just going to get the front of this base. 
and then I got to get the eyes and parts of the horse that I can see. I'm sure if I had a higher IQ, the language of Beowulf wouldn't trip me up when I'm reading it. That's, that's what it is. My IQ is so low, you know, I'm just not a functional human being. I, I, you know what? I'm so disabled because my IQ is so low. I need a check. That's, that's, that's what they do in Europe. That's the men of Europe. I need a check. I have a low IQ. What am I going to... I'm IQ African. Please give me a check. <laughs> I run a shop in Knightsbridge. And I dip in the Nans Trust. I need a check. <laughs> I think it'll trip it. Uh, I think Shakespeare and Beowulf will trip any any no, a, 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 any average reader up because you know it just nobody talks that way anymore. You know, I mean. You have to hear the speaking word, and or it's like memorizing Shakespeare. You have to you have to hear the 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 spoken word. You know, what's he that wishes so, my cousin Westmoreland? No, my fair cousin, if we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss, and if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. Rather, proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which have no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company, who fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crespian. He who outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tip toe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crespian. He who outlives this day and sees old age will yearly on the visual feast his neighbors and say tomorrow is St. Crispin's. Then shall our names familiar in their mouths as household words Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbert be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. But we in it shall be remembered, we few, we happy few. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile. This day shall gentle his condition, and gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed. They were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap, while any, while any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's day. My sovereign lord, bestow yourself with speed. The French are bravely in their battle set, and will with all expediency march upon us. All things are ready if our minds be so. Punish the man whose mind is backwards now. Thou dost not wish more help from England, cuz... Why, God speed, my lord, you and I alone, without more help, could fight this royal battle. You know your places. God be with you all. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. Here comes the herald of the French. Once more I come to know of thee, King Henry, if for thy ransom thou wilt now compound before thy most assured overflow, overthrow. Who hath sent thee now? The constable of France. I bear you... I pray thee, bear my former answer back. Tell the constable, we are but warriors for the working day. All our gayness and our guilt but be not all besmirched with rainy marching in the painful fields, but by the mass our hearts are in the trim. Herald, save thou thy labor. Come thou no more for ransom, gentle herald. They shall have none, I swear. But these my joints, which... If they shall have, as I shall leave it them, shall yield them little, tell the constable. And so I shall, and so fare thee well. Thou never shalt hear herald any more. My lord, most humbly on thy knees, I beg the leading of the bold. Take it, brave York. And now, soldiers, march away, and how thou pleasest God dispose the day kind of fitting now that I'm painting French looking knights here you know your places God be with you all
I was in that play. I played Harold. So that's how I know it. I played Montjoy the Herald. We ask for quarter, but to bury our dead. I don't even get a decent part in a play anymore. Nobody believes in Shakespeare. Ah, maintain frame. I've got to I've got to get some of these guys done. Of course, I haven't been uh I haven't been doing the live streams because um I've been working. And then uh just a little housekeeping update here. Um uh what was I going to do? Uh oh, sa uh, Saturdays in uh October may not have a lot of live streams on those days. Uh I will most likely be uploading the uh Monster Fest videos in their places. So those of you in my normal audience, I hope you watch them. Leave me tons of likes. They will also be re-released on uh, Rumble same day, and I'll be I'll be putting the older videos up on Rumble uh, as well um, when I get a time when I get a, when I get a chance to um, uh, what do you call it? Upload them, you know, just so that so some of the release get so uh, there might only be one live stream in October. Again, I'm I'm fighting a lot of uh, as long as the weather holds. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be busy. I did 50 hours this week and I had, I w I had 32 of those hours, um, by Wednesday, I had 32 of those hours. And then Thursday, my truck broke down because they didn't fill the, uh, they serviced it and nobody filled up my, uh, transmission with transmission fluid and my transmission exploded. Hey, thanks for watching, Leon T. Great chat, buddy. Always, always a pleasure. I gotta get to some of your videos about the um, the epic scale Civil War guys. I mean, maybe I'll just buy your collection. That's what I'll do. I'll buy your collection. You know, I, I'm too fat, dumb, and lazy to do anything for myself anymore. I've got arthritis in my hand. It's all cramping trying to hold these guys. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll make you do double duty. And that way the South can ride again, I do declare. How did I do these guys? Now, when you uh, memorize for Shakespeare and everything, a lot of things, what a lot of what they don't tell you is that you will be living the play in rehearsals for six weeks. And before they even start rehearsals, they've already assembled the cast and they've been doing script work for, I want to say, another four weeks before that, you know. And so you should be studying up from the get go. But when you combine it with physical activity and stage direction, it, it, it kind of just compounds it. Especially, uh, you know, what I would do to memorize my scripts is I would just get, I would get my script out and I'd start looking at my script while doing the dishes. Uh, and that would be after I have someone read it to me. That way I, I, I kind of, because me, I need to hear my cues. I need to hear my cues. It's just kind of the...
Q's being the line before your line. Mm, I don't know if this is coming in. Right back off right there, I'll be in frame. Yep. I'm, uh, apologize again, you have to bear with me. See if we can get at least one more of these rows done today. Okay. I will take that. Just wipe off the paint there. All right. Close that. We get out our green. We get out our gray. Last two colors, and then we wash it. Oh, last three colors. Yucky. You know, one of those things, uh, Shakespeare is definitely, and, and Beowulf are definitely one of those things that you actually have, you have to physically hear it. You have to physically hear it for the first couple times before you can just go off and read it. Preferably you hear it from a very young Patrick Stewart. Um, pre, I like anything pre uh, Patrick Stewart, pre... Uh, Pre-Next Generation. I mean, I, I don't mind Next Generation. I just, you know, he could have gone a different route, but he landed that sweet gig. You know, he's pretty good at delivering uh, the lines and everything. Like, he was pretty good in Life Force, if anyone's seen that. House divided can't stand. I really don't mind green and white.
do with their headdresses? What did we do? Okay, we painted them green. So I got to get up to the tops of these helmets here. I might have to go off camera. These guys have feathers. But I need to pick up that squig hog boy, otherwise I gotta change up my description. I can't wait until this army's done. This army's gonna be a little bit of a work in progress. I don't think I'll be able to really get to it in the sense that I got going on. A second here give me a second right here Should really glue these guys to corks. That's what I should do. That's okay though. The job I'm doing is so fast it doesn't even matter. They look good when they're done though. They look good when they're done. Get a smaller brush. Do the very tippy tops of their helmets. Very, very tippy tops. Time for a little bit of gold. You have to forgive me. I cut my hand. I cut my thumb, and now the skin's peeling off. I really cut my thumb, and I just got a skin's peeling off because it's fully healed now. To clip that off, it's getting annoying. Dragging on everything, getting in there. No, that was a that was a professional production. Sorry, historical doppelganger. That was a professional production at the Black Box Theater where I live. <clears throat> and that that was attached. There was the Black Box, and then there was the Grand. And the, the, those are both downtown, but not all the way downtown. They're still parking. <coughs> the guy, I, I will say, the guy playing King Henry, uh, I don't, I think it was Barlow something. It, he was making six hundred dollars a night. And uh, you know that that's that that's when you when you get one of those speaking roles uh, that they they pay. The pay was pretty good. The pay was pretty good. And then uh, the matinee, but I think you still get paid for the matinees. I think that I don't think you get double pay. But six hundred dollars a night for, I think they run the play for six weeks. 
I have to pay you something for your time because you're damn sure not getting paid for rehearsal. <laughs> Everyone in an ensemble like myself or Harold, you have uh, speaking lines, you're just getting a paltry 200. So you can't live off of it. And I think that's why uh, we suffer today. We don't have good actors that can live off of doing plays. You go back to the 70s and the 60s, that's what actors would do when they didn't have parts in movies. They would go back to doing plays. People actually left home? No. You don't leave home. You got Netflix and Orn Pay hubs. You know, it's funny. If you, if you say Orn Pay, the word, or P-O-R-N, if you say the word, uh, they algorithmically suppress you. There's something like, fuck you, YouTube. Seriously. I'm going to do this feather up here. I think these feathers will look good in uh, Xandri dust. No, I was not in a musical. I somehow remembered all the lines to the St. Crispin Day speech scene, and I acted it out on, I, I, I recited it on camera. But, but during the run of that, I played Montjoy the Herald. It would have been cooler if I had a horse to ride around. Mm, yes. How many lines does Henry V have? According to open source Shakespeare, speeches, lines for Henry V in Henry V total. 147. Okay, no, it's uh, all five acts. Um, Hundred and eighty four pages. It's got a more he's got more than hundred and forty seven lines. Hmm. Use just to highlight up the lance a little bit, make it a little bit more wood. I can't sing my way out of a paper bag. Uh, uh, there was a production of Inspecting Carol where we sang uh, We Wish You a Merry Christmas at the end of the play, and that was it. And that was, uh, that closed, that play closed the week before, uh, thanks, the week, bef 
the week of Thanksgiving on Wednesday was the last performance. And uh, yeah, so it was quite uh, fitting, the Wednesday. But that doesn't count. Anyone can, sing, I, anyone can sing Christmas music, especially we wish you a Merry Christmas. You know, you run through the song twice, everybody's up and running. You've got that hammer in your tool belt. Hey, look at that. We did all this work today. Need just a little bit more metal. A little bit more metal. Get your white out. Freaking hairs. Never mind. That's not going to work. Oh, just maintain the frame. And then there's scenes where, uh, like in Henry V, where everybody does sing non nobis and to damn. But the words for that are very easy. Sed nomine, sed nomine, Dio te gloriam. You know, uh, so it's, it's, but there's always, there was somebody, there's always somebody who leads that song and it, it's not the king. So when your voice is drowned out with a dozen other people. All right, just a little bit more green, and this is done. It's a done. It's a done deal on this little sprue. That'll be four to go. Four to go. For then a second unit of knights. 
Only, the only reason I got out of 60 hour work week today is, this, is that it, my truck broke down. I don't think I finished that tangent. I trail off a lot, don't I? Little green. steel just a little bit of white And this is just for the flags on the lances, basically. Just a couple spots of armor on the backs of their arms. They don't need to look perfect. Uh, this is about as good as they're going to look from that angle. I don't need to see it here, so hold on and bear with me. Where is that? Where did I bleep up at? I think that's it. There we go. And just like so. One little tray at a time. That's how we're going to do it. All right, all right. Now we're going to go over to the Orc Frog. How did I do this? Oh, I glued. Okay, I remember now. I glued these in here and uh, just put static grass where I could. All right, fair enough. Right. This guy needs his blue. I got to do blue paint now. Take 
two drops, two and a half drops, and then we'll take a drop of water. Enough. Watch Holy Diver break all the rules. Good. Put that down there. Get my fat arm right here. All right, all right. Put that green pot there. I don't know, I, I, these have absolutely got to get done, so. Uh, that's, the, that's the hard part. That way I can focus on beast boths on squigasaurs and show the world the power of my 40k autism. This is just a uh, game color blue ink, and I'm highlight and I'm just so, I'm just hardening it up with a little bit of a uh, magic blue. So it's the uh, this is what I could be using as a contrast, but it's just it's just blue ink. What's up, Bon Kettering Ham? Oh, you missed all the fun earlier. You'll have to give me a rewatch. Uh, we were talking Shakespeare. We were talking stocks. You uh, you missed all the good stuff, buddy. You missed all the good stuff. Now I'm just being my boring old uh, orc painting self here. You'll have to give it a rewatch. Definitely worth it. But I will take five minutes as long as you leave a like, good buddy. <laughs> Let's see here. I got to get in there. I always bleep up on building these kits. I really do. I always bleep up on building them. They're always just kind of off for me. brush I'm gonna go in here and get some of these uh, lips that the lips that I can see I should always add these after these gobs but I really don't see the point just mostly from where you're gonna be looking at the model and everything just as long as it's somewhat clean underneath Long way to go on these guys still. I gotta do tooth and gums. I gotta finish skin for the orcs. I gotta do the reds. It just never freaking ends. I want it to end. I want it to end. I wish I could be one of those people who didn't have to play with a painted army. But I I I can't do it. I can't do it. It's like that GBH song, when will it end? When will it end?
never ends. There we go. Gotta go off camera. There, just about. A little more water. I always like to uh, pull this stuff away from every other color, you know. Because these are on top, so they're considered outside. These are The straps are definitely on the inside, so I do the straps first. So if I don't paint directly next to them, it doesn't matter. All right, he's got his blue. Oh, yeah. He's got his lips. All right. Moving over here. What did we drop? I don't see anything. Cleaner water time. What are we doing on battery? We're doing good on battery. Wow. Oh, yeah. I didn't start painting for at least an hour. I've been flapping my gums. Then we got the little squig bob. Bomb squig. Can't argue with that. I'll take that. What I need to do is I need to organize the browns. So those browns will go over there. This goes up here with the metallics. This goes over here with whites. Metallics. Back over here with that color. Don't need it. This can be over here. And then, uh, let's see here. We can start on some red. Trusty Mephiston. I need some...
water. All right, you, you're first. Again, you can see how clearly the colors bond to the ink that they use, that I use at least. Ah, we got to do this guy's pants. His pants is red. There we go, got his pants. Let's go. Now we got to work on the tooth and gum. Got to have a good tooth and gum ratio for this. <laughs> good tooth and gum. need the smaller brush now for the gums. You always do the gums first. And uh, I always do the teeth. The teeth are a combination of a uh, brown ink. I, br I, I, I ink wash the mouths brown and then um, I put uh, leather brown on the teeth themselves and then I'll highlight them with, me with uh, Menoth White from the P3 range. That's my favorite bone color. You just can't go wrong with Menoth White. Let's see. Oh, we're good for time. We might even finish the tooth and gum step here. I have got to dust this table off again. We need a brush, just not that brush. I guess this one will do. Yep, all right.
good old tooth and gum ratioed out. Tooth to gum ratio. Yes. All right, we'll use a dry brush now, get this little guy, and we'll do our men off. Even the orc needs teeth. Even the goblin needs Is his mouth open? Okay, good. As are you. I hope you are having a stellar weekend, Shadow. Um, yeah, this is the first weekend I've gotten off and I didn't have to work or do stuff, so um, I'm kind of taking it easy. I, I did take Labor Day weekend to, to relax, but I also wrote two movie reviews. <laughs> During Labor Day weekend, I was sitting in my big chair, had my notebook, you know, so I, I got to write one more tonight, which, uh, so my, my, my new thing that I'm doing with the movie reviews is I get four pages. If I can't make the review in four pages, I have to go through and I have to re-edit it down to four. I get four full notebook pages and, um. I'm limiting, this is an old Holy Diver show, but I'm limiting, how many did I use? I used like 21 cards on this. I'm limiting myself to five cards. I get five cards from those four pages because I don't I don't want any of these to have a runtime longer than nine minutes. But I, I, I think uh, one of them is a Vincent Price movie. That one's going to have, um, that one's probably going to be the longest one and I'm saving that one for the finale. I'm still out. I, I know what the third one is going to be, but I'm still out on the uh, I'm still out on the fourth movie. I haven't decided definitively what the uh, fourth movie is going to be. I'm going to be doing the I'm going to be watching the third movie tonight. So, tooth and gum ratio. Back to that. And then you just get your you just let your men off work for you here. Boom. Squiggog George, old oh, Squiggog George is gonna bite ya. I do like these models. I just don't think they should be better than Mega Knobs. Nothing should be better than Mega Knobs. Mega Knobs should be one of the best units in the game. So bet, so good that people are just like, yeah, they're broken. You know. Or give the Mega Knobs the Toughness 7. Give them Toughness 7 and a 5 plus feel no pain. Keep them at the points they're at. Keep them at the shitty damage output they're at. Just make it so they don't die to piss and shit. Yeah, we're definitely going to chomp on some Humies this weekend. The list I'm running doesn't have... Uh-oh, it's going to have two of these units in them. Um, I've kind of changed up my list a little bit from last time simply because I'm just... I, I, I need to try to I, need to... I need to win one game against Marines. I need to, I need to, get, a, I need to get a good win in. But I think uh, Tyranids are entering the fray. I need. I also need to find time to edit up the two battle reports that I have. Again, if you're not uh, watching the... Um, I'll have to try those, Corn. I, again, if you're, not wa if you're not following me on Rumble, you're not getting all the nice battle reports that I'm putting out. And you're not getting out the freebies when I have a Joe Biden moment and I release a Patreon exclusive <laughs> on there. So um, there is that. You need to come down for a game sometime, Coronite. I'm sure the uh, audience would love that. I got a guy who's uh, what's his name? He's on Instagram. He wants to come out from Colorado. I think oh, uh, Olinius Pius is also from Colorado. I got two fans in Colorado. That's why uh, any money that I take in on Patreon is going to Gatekeeper Con. Now, I mean, I actually, I don't know if anyone will be able to say how well it. I actually bought another piece of terrain, and I'm painting it right now. I want to for sure have two tables down for 40k, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of the money that I've saved up to buy uh, to buy some of the uh, 
Frontline or GameMat.eu sets that are actually pretty big and they lay down a decent amount of terrain for a table and uh, two mats. But then you got to buy the tables themselves. But any money that I am taking in, I'm going for Gatekeeper Con. I really think that people would love to come in, play, uh, play in a tournament, an old world tournament with me. You know, I mean, just just a getaway where everybody just plays three games of 40k, three games of fantasy, two days. That's it. Um, you know, uh, I, I think that would be pretty fun, you know. Two days of gaming with yours truly. Then everybody can see what a, what a piss ant I am. That's not fair. I lost. I never lose. I, I never lose. Hurry up and finish these orc teeth and claws. He's got his little goblin friend right here. He's got a few teeth hanging out of his mouth. And if you screw up with a little bit of the tooth, with a little bit of the teeth, and you get some, and you kind of saturate the area with white, well, you can see what I'm doing here is just taking that, and I'll just make it really green around the edge of the mouth. Which you get away with. I like the top of the nostrils. Very forward cheekbone, boom. And he needs a, he's got a little bit of metal right there. So while I'm doing the mouths of these guys, we'll do that. Obligatory piercing check. Um, tooth check on him. Good, good. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. And now we just need claws. And then this guy is almost done. I'm just going to sharpen his flesh up a little bit. And then I'm, uh, these ones are a little bit, I want these ones to be way noticeably different. So I am doing a triad. I started with green ink. I did this color. Then I'm going to be doing a 50-50 color of these. These two together. This one kind of being a little bit more predominant. And then I'm going to wash it. Not with the not with the Games Workshop green. I'm gonna wash the whole model with uh, with strong tone because they're just a completely different unit. And I, one problem I have is that all right, I'm about to head out myself. Have a good day, Sashay. One problem I have with painting units in 40k is that I I I tend to make everything this too much of the same. Everything ends up being the same. Some bombs on this. All right, you, you've been working on Death Guard. They just got a points buff. I heard it, uh, you know, they're not as expensive as they used to be. I was looking at Thousand Suns helping my friend out, and I can't believe how expensive some of that chaos stuff is. School my ass with Death Guard and do a battle report. There we go. 
All right, Opie's got little toesy woesies. Is that little piece of uh, metal right there? Bam, get in there, finish off that foot. And this is just the phase where the model is the model itself is basically done. What I'm doing now is I'm, I'm just cleaning up uh, lines, and th that's the most this is the most time consuming part of the model. If I really wanted to, I can just throw the uh, strong tone, a light strong tone wash over this model and uh, call it done. Uh, the reason why I opt for the strong tone because it, it really does uh, it brings up a little bit of the magic blue for some reason it reacts really well with the magic blue it gives it kind of a shine and then when you dry coat it it it, it kind of looks like a dirty hog beast that's uh, been in the mud That's about it, and uh, we've reached the two-hour mark, gentlemen. So you know, if if, we, if anybody has anything to say, I'll leave the uh, what do you call it, the chat open for another full minute here, and uh, we'll call it good at that. Because you know, I, I need my I, I need my Biden nap next up after this. Um, I can come down the, I can come down tonight for sure. Finish him, him, and him. All of these guys are just gonna get done. Because what you know, that's all you need to do is just you just got to get first past the first guy in the box, and then the rest of the unit just falls into place. All right, we're grinding to a halt here. So, yep, got a lot of red, a lot of red work to do. Still got to do food prep. That's not fair. Having to do food prep is not fair. I just like, uh, where am I going to find the time? I'm gonna watch the movie while I'm painting. I'm gonna want I, I gotta wake up and I gotta take notes on the movie. But again, like yeah, four pages and everything. Well, all right. I think we'll about call it, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure painting and hanging out with all of you today. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll go over to the uh, the outro screen anyway. As you know, promotional consideration always paid for by the following. Anything I take in on Patreon goes towards Gatekeeper Con, and. Uh, just want to thank John K, Andrew C, Lady Quick Blood, 35 Moon Bad, Bob S D, Craig B, Jimmy M, Drac Wizza, James C, Macy J, Tipsy Thomas, James B, Wolock, Jason G, Michael W, Christian M, Cornite Care Bearer, Linnaeus Pius, Road Dog, King of Salt, Soul Blighter, Sage MC, PP has Quali, After Dark Prince.net, Celtic Miniatures.com. Links are in the description below. Randy the Axeman, always thank you. And then uh little uh, outro here. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way to do that is on Instagram. The DMs are usually the best way. If you have comments, leave them in the in the comment section below. I will get back to you there. If you really want to support the channel, go over to Rumble. Link in the description in the below. Uh, check me out on Rumble. Don't forget to subscribe to Soy Free Warhammer. That is my Rumble channel, the home of all the Holy Diver battle reports. Anyway, as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until I see you again, keep painting, keep fighting, and stay metal, my friends, and we'll see you in the next one.